Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on contrasts. For the purpose of this mini lecture, we're going to be looking again at this mice lifetime example. In this uh, experiment, there were mice that were given in one of six diets. The main difference between these diets was the amount of calories provided in the diet, where the numbers here indicate the, the caloric content. So on the left side, we have more calories, and on the right side, we have less calories. On the y-axis, then, we have listed the lifetime for each mouse, which is given by a dot, and then we've also put box plots for each of the different six groups. Right, so we see the general pattern here of uh, fewer calories provided, longer lifetimes. All right, so we're going to once again be considering our one-way ANOVA model. The one-way ANOVA model says that these lifetimes come from a normal distribution that are independent, and the mean of those uh, normal distributions depend on which group, or in this case, which diet the mice was fed. And then we have some common variance between all the groups, sigma squared. In this case, we have i equal to six groups. So previously, we've talked about a number of specific hypotheses in this uh, framework. We've thought about uh, a hypothesis that said, is there any difference between any of the groups? And we answered that by using a one-way ANOVA F test. We also talked about a number of pairwise comparisons examples. So anytime you want to just compare two diets out of the bunch, and how do you do that? So those are the topics of previous. Now we're going to get into more complicated hypotheses. Um, and although they're more com complicated, they're still simple hypotheses in the sense that we talked about previously when we talked about simple versus composite. So here's some examples of these hypotheses that are more complicated but yet simple hypotheses. The first one is, uh, is there a difference between in mean lifetime between NR40 and NR50? So this is exactly what we've seen before uh, in terms of a pairwise comparison between these two diets. But we're going to put it into a more general framework during the course of this mini-lecture called a contrast. So here's a more complicated um, comparison. You might think ahead of time that, um, that all that really matters is the caloric content that is the 40 versus the 50. And so you might say, well, is there a difference between the group that was given 40 calories, uh, or yes, the caloric content of 40, versus those that were given 50? And so the, really the question then becomes, is there a difference between the mean lifetime on this diet and the average mean lifetime on these two diets? And we'll see how that plays out in a second. Here's yet one more that's even more complicated. This one says that maybe all that matters is being above or below some threshold. So in this case, in this experiment, the group that was NP, this is the group that was allowed to eat as much as they wanted, versus the NN85, which is the standard diet that's fed to mice uh, in the labs, versus the other options, which are all lower calorie diets. So here the question is, is there any difference between the, the normal uh, diets versus the low calorie diets. All right, and so we're going to use a framework here where we're going to set up all of these hypotheses uh, under this notation right here. So we're going to set up this parameter gamma and we're going to say is that parameter zero under the null hypothesis or is it not zero in the alternative hypothesis? And so now the question is well how do we construct this parameter gamma? So here's how we're going to construct it. We're going to construct it by taking the mean, for the very first question here, the mean of the NR40 group and subtracting the mean of the NR50 group. Remember these mu's correspond to the population means, so the true means in the population, which of course we don't know, but we will be estimating. So that's for the first one. For the second one, here we have what's the difference between the NR40 group and the average mean of the groups that were given 50. Similarly, in the third example, here now we're going to take the average of the first two and subtract off the average of the low-calorie diets. All right, so all three of these are, <clears throat> are parameters now of our model. They're just functions of the parameters that we had in our population, the means. And all of these have the same framework. So for this one right here, the question is, is this difference zero? or is it not zero? For the final one here, the question is, is this difference zero, or is it not zero? And that's the type of test that we're going to be running. 
All right, so one way to write these down is to list all the possible diets on the top. Here, I've just listed them in the order of uh, increasing uh, sample means, but any order would work. Here we have, um, we're going to write the coefficients that are associated with these statements on the previous slide. So notice here that the only two diets that are involved were NR40 and NR50. So all other diets are going to have coefficients of zero. The coefficient in front of this mu NR40 is one, and the coefficient in front of this is a negative one. All right on the next line here, we have a plus one here, then we have a minus one half here and a minus one half there. If we were to multiply this minus one half through to both means, and so forth. So that's how we're going to now write it. So here's the first example where NR40 had a plus one and NR50 had a minus one. For the second comparison that we did, we had, we're comparing NR40 versus the two that had a 50. And then in our final uh, comparison. All right, so now we're going to build in some more notation here and call these uh, coefficients here, we're going to call them C1 up through C6. So in this first comparison that we're doing, C1 is 0, C2 is 0, C3 is 0, C4 is minus 1, C5 is 0, and C6 is 1. Okay, and you can do the similar thing for the second comparison and for the third comparison. All right, so these uh, generally are called linear combinations. So anytime you have these coefficients uh, that you're going to put in front of the means of the populations and do some kind of either testing or creating a confidence interval, uh, we're going to call that it's a linear combination of the mean parameters that we have. If you'll notice that all of these linear combinations, if you were to add them up, they would all sum to zero. And so these particular types of linear combinations are called contrasts. So anytime these coefficients sum to zero, it's a contrast. All right, <clears throat> so we write the uh, generic notation for now the i groups that we have. This gamma parameter that we're interested in is just a linear combination of the mean parameters in the model. Right, times their coefficients and add it all up. We're going to estimate this parameter by just plugging in the sample means for each group. All right, and we're going to call that estimated parameter G. All right, again, gamma is something that we don't know because we don't know any of the mu's, but G is something we can calculate and we can know because we actually gather data and have estimates for our population means. We just plug those in. Those are the sample means. So this is the mean of the uh, lifetimes under the first diet. So in this case, the mean of the lifetime under the NP diet. All right, so once we have this estimated, we're going to find its standard error. Its standard error, the, the form of the standard error is like this. So here is our standard pooled estimate of the standard deviation. This is exactly the same thing that we've used in the pairwise comparisons uh, that we did um, under this ANOVA previously. But now instead of just having one over N1 and one over N2 and that sort of thing, we actually have these coefficients, c1, c2, squared in the numerator. So just to make the connection to the pairwise comparison, if you look at the first comparison that we have up here, the first comparison just says, all right, to estimate g, we're going to take the average for nr40 and subtract the average for nr50. Right? This is exactly the same type of thing that happens in the formula for doing t-tests or confidence intervals for a pairwise comparison. Similarly, if we're plugging in 1 and negative 1 into C1, well, really it's C4 and C6, right? all the other ones are 0, so they cancel out. And then you just have 1 over the sample size in this group plus 1 over the sample size in this group. All right, so the point here is that the pairwise comparisons that we've talked about previously are just special cases of this uh, contrast idea. All right, so we have an estimate, we have a standard error, and so now we can construct our t statistics and our confidence intervals. So our t statistic is just going to be g divided by the standard error of g, 
and our confidence interval is just going to be g plus or minus a critical value times the standard error of g. So this is exactly like what we've done before. And as I mentioned, we have the same estimate for the pooled variance, and we have the same degrees of freedom that are associated with that pooled estimate of the variance. This degrees of freedom is just the total sample size minus the number of groups. So typically we refer to that as N minus I, capital I. All right, so this is uh, all we need in order to do these uh, hypotheses tests. So I'm going to do now an example. So here is uh, the relevant quantities that we need in order to construct these um, tests and, and confidence intervals. For each diet, we need to know the sample size, we need to know the mean, and the standard deviation within those groups. All right, and from that, we can calculate the estimate of the standard deviation, the pooled estimate of the standard deviation. In this case, it turned out to be 6.68. You should make sure that you can calculate that given this uh, standard deviations in each of the groups and the sample size within the groups. And it turns out then that there's 343 degrees of freedom. That's just the sum of all of these n's minus 6 because there are 6 groups. Alright, and once we add that, now we have everything we need in order to construct the quantities of interest. So here I have for the three different hypotheses that we're looking at, I have the estimate for the linear combination or for the contrast. That's given by G in the first column. Then we have the standard error for G given in the second column. The T is just the ratio of these two. And then we can compare this T statistic to a T distribution with 343 degrees of freedom. In this case, we're always doing uh, two-sided hypotheses, and we can get the p-value for those two-sided hypotheses, and they're right here. In the final two columns here, we have the 95% credible interval for this linear combination, or for this contrast. Okay, now of course, uh, we typically will not do this by hand, but you should verify that you can do it by hand. And instead, we'll use some software to accomplish this task for us. In this case here, we're going to use SAS. So the first step is just reading in the data. And now the second step, one of the key pieces to keep in mind when you're doing this, is to understand what order the variables are in the software that you're using. So in the, the description in this mini lecture, I've been always keeping the order being uh, the order of the sample means. Right? But there's no reason that your software is going to be keeping them in that order. And what we can see here is that SAS has put them, uh, the diets, in alphabetical order. And apparently where the capital letters all come first in the alphabet. Which is why low pro here is the last. So when we're going to construct these contrasts, it's important just to know the ordering of the diets in SAS. Alright, so once we know the ordering here, and so you might want to write these down and then turn to the next slide. Once we know this ordering, then we can construct our appropriate contrasts. So we're going to do that in PROCGLM. PROCGLM we've seen before in getting an ANOVA table. But now we've added three new lines, and they're called estimate lines, or they're using an estimate statement. There is also a contrast statement that you could use. But here I'm preferring to use an estimate statement, I'll tell you why in a second. All right, so what you need in an estimate statement, the first thing goes in quotes, and that's just a label that's going to show up in your output. So this is just to help you reference which contrast you're looking for, or looking at. Then you need to know what variable, what explanatory variable you want to create this contrast for. In this case, we only have one explanatory variable, it's diet, so, but we put that here. And then we say, okay, there are six diets, what's the coefficient that should be associated with each diet? So here we want to take NR40 and subtract NR50. And so if we go back a slide, we'll see that NR40 is the second diet and NR50 is the third diet. So now we say, well, we don't want to take anything with the first diet, but we want to have NR50, sorry, NR40, and then subtract NR50. And nothing to do with the last three diets. All right, so we do a similar thing for this second contrast that we're interested in. Now we have to deal with the fact that this is a fraction. And so here we're going to have one, we're going to take NR40 and take the average of NR50 and RR50. 
right? That's why we have the 0.5s here. <clears throat> so then sometimes it's a pain to work with uh, the decimal representation. In particular, if you imagine taking uh, three things and taking an average of those three things, what you really need is to have 0.333 repeating. And so you'd have to write out a whole bunch of threes. So instead of doing that, um, we're going to take advantage of the option in this estimate statement, which is the reason I'm choosing to use the estimate statement. The option here is divisor equals something. All right, so basically what this divisor says is it takes all these values and divides by that divisor. All right, so in order to get one half in front of NP, which is the first diet, uh, I think it was the first diet in the list. Let's just look. Oh, no, I'm wrong. So N N N85 was the first diet in the list. So in order to get a one half in front of N N85, we take this two and divide it by four. And we do a similar thing for all the rest of the diets. So the convenient aspect here is that you can write all of the coefficients as integers and use the appropriate divisor. All right, so then the output that we get from SAS looks like this, where we have uh, a first set of rows that provides the value, the estimated value of the linear combination or of the contrast. It provides a standard error, the t statistic, and the p value. And then if we put this CL parm option in the model statement, it's also going to create confidence limits or confidence intervals for any parameters that we're constructing um, or we're estimating. And so in these estimate statements, that's exactly what we're doing. We're creating new parameters as linear combinations of these means. And so it's going to go ahead and spit out some confidence intervals for these parameters or for these contrasts that we're looking at. So here's a 95% confidence interval for the difference between these two diets. All right, so to wrap this up, I just want to remind everybody that contrasts are linear combinations that sum to zero, linear combinations of the means. And secondly, that in order to, these are, these contrasts end up being simple hypotheses and therefore we use the same t-test tools that we've been using before to calculate p-values and calculate confidence intervals. Thank you.